You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. As always, we're very, very grateful and uh, thankful for the questions, thankful for the reviews, thankful for the shares. Thank you for the subscriptions. When you subscribe, it really does help the show. So please do so. Take a minute if you don't mind. That'd be awesome. We do appreciate those reviews, and I actually really love reading them. They really make us, let us know what we're doing, whether we're doing a good job or whether we're not doing Suck and wind. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, before we get into it, are you ready for your part 107 recurrency exam? Are you ready to take that 40 question test at a federal testing center? If you're not prepared, then check out the Drone U Part 107 training that is available online. We have multiple classes from lecture style classes to straight to the point classes to the, hey, I don't need that. I just need to go over airspace class with, we've got that with Ted, who's a certified flight instructor. On top of that, we also have quizzes and exams and tests that you can take to make sure that you are ready. Once you pass with 90%, you know you're ready to go take the test. All right, so today's question, which again, brought to you by DroneU.Education. Again, that's DroneU.Education. Which of the following operations would be regulated by 14 CFR Part 107? Again, Rob, which of the following operations would be regulated by 14 CFR Part 107? Conducting public operations during a search mission. Flying for enjoyment with family and friends. Operating your SUAS for an imagery company. Hmm. So it's not B. <laughs> it's C. That is right. Operating your SUAS. That that was that was really easy. All right. Let's do another one. When requesting a waiver, the requirement. Uh, this is a trick question. When requesting a waiver, the required documents should be presented to the FAA at least how many days prior to the planned operation. <laughs> 360. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Is that one of the options? I think the question should be, when your chances are less than 1% for getting a waiver, how long <laughs> should you actually wait when presented to the Let's FAA? Let's say, the, of those options, I'm going to say 90 days. 90 days is correct. So <laughs> The longest possible option given. Yes. So when requesting a waiver, the required documents should be presented to the FAA at least 90 days prior to the planned operation. So I hope that helps. Uh, all right. Well, let's hear today's question, Rob. Hey, guys. Love your show. I've got two questions. First, is there any advantage to marketing the fact that you have a private pilot's license when you are marketing your Part 107 license? And number two, what are the pros and cons of attaching or using carbon fiber blades on your Phantom 4 Pro? Thanks. Thank you, Doug. Really appreciate the question. Um, appreciate you taking the time to, to call that. And I love that the uh, smart asked two questions, completely unrelated, but both good questions. But let's start with the, the carbon fiber, if you don't mind. Um, first of all, uh, I think this kind of comes down to personal opinion. Um, if you, well, there it's personal opinion, but you'll definitely see more wear and tear on your drone over time. Um, if you use carbon fiber props, I've never been a big fan of carbon fiber props. We did some testing a long time ago to measure micro vibrations, uh, caused by carbon fiber props and they do increase substantially. Hmm. Um, you can increase the speed and agility of your bird by adding carbon fiber props, but you're also going to add a little bit of shake. Sometimes the camera shake can be seen in the gimbal. Sometimes it cannot be depending on the type of gimbal or the type of uh, aircraft that you're flying. There's a lot of tracking that's happening in the propeller as you're flying. So uh, propeller tracking, essentially, think of it as like bending of the propeller, giving it flex, essentially. With carbon fiber props, you have less flex. So if you have like less give and less tracking in the props overall, thus making the overall flight more rigid and, again, more agile. But you're going to lose, I guess the word is fluidity, uh, smoothness. 
Um, it's give and take. I personally, I do not see a point in buying any carbon fiber props for a Phantom. If you're flying a Hex, sure, I totally get it. Makes 100% sense. Like, I really understand it. As far as Inspires go, I've seen people run carbon fiber props with Inspires. Not for me. I've seen so many people who've had them, they tend, it just like just go through their Facebook profiles and this is not a good example, but people tend to replace their birds more often. Um, in mm. our testing, we actually measured the amount of micro vibrations. This, this was on an Inspire one and I decided that over the, over the life of the bird that it's not good for the drone. Um, if you look at John McBride, he's actually got, I think the longest lasting Inspire one. I don't know of an older one. Mine's not as old as the his. The one you crashed? The one I crashed, yes. Um, it's still <laughs> flying. Not using carbon fiber props. Yeah. Um, and he, I would say he probably flies more than I do. Um, I think that's a safe assumption. So never uses carbon fiber props. Bird has lasted a really long time. Are they quieter? Is that one reason you might want to use them? I think it depends on the prop because, again, work. if you are – if you are, I actually think the answer is no because the, the quiet props are using the kind of the same technology that you see in Boeing. You, you know, on the, on the 737s, the new 737s have that tip at the end to help reduce wake turbulence behind the prop. Hmm. Um, you know, we're seeing the same thing with drones. Obviously – that curvature in the wing cannot be too drastic as you see it on a plane for two reasons. Uh, one is called, uh, it's like uh, um, retreating blade stall, which essentially means hmm. that the front end of the prop is spinning faster than the back end and you get the blade that stalls. So that's one potential problem that can happen. But if you are wanting a quieter prop, you typically use like the, all the new DJI props and the third-party quiet props have this just very slight um, elevation at the very end of the prop that tips the prop up. And it's also cut in a more, mm, I don't know, acute angle. Maybe that's the right way to try to visualize it for people. It's very mm. difficult as I'm only on my first cup of coffee this morning. <laughs> um, but that being said, um, I do not see a reason why it would be quieter. I can see more agility again. And when you're talking about heavy lift, you know, drones, it's the only way to go. But for these drones that have been like hyper engineered, like the Phantom series, the Inspire series, in my opinion, it takes away from the experience. And based off of our research, it doesn't help. Interesting. And they're a lot more expensive. They are a lot more expensive. And as far as getting additional agility, I would say that the vast majority of pilots, and uh, don't take this wrong, but don't know what to do with that agility anyways. I think that is a statement that could be made with a significant amount of confidence. Yeah, probably a very large percentage. High 90s. I wouldn't say high 90s. I think people are getting a lot better. Actually, Ooh. watching people who have done our drills and exercise and the old don't crash course, it's fascinating to watch how they fly. Yeah, so, they're getting a lot better. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yeah, it really is. It's fun to be a part of. All right, well, cool. I, oh, so his second question, uh, again, this, is a, this, is, this question is based 100% on opinion. There is no fact in this one. <laughs> uh, so the question, his question is, should I mention to people that I'm a manned pilot? Well, if you're really good at making pizzas, should you talk about how good you are at that, Asian cuisine? That's not a good comparison. Uh, come on. No, no, no. We're going we're gonna to disagree on this one, I can tell already. Well, okay. There are a lot of guys out there. And I mean, even, even one of our competitors, um, who's a drone school, you know, talks about how everyone is a manned pilot with manned aviation experience. Yeah, that's a different and issue. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but it, relevancy is an important issue because everyone knows, even if you're great at man piloting, even if you're great at flying an airplane, it has absolutely nothing to do with you flying a drone. Now, does it have something to do with you knowing airspace and understanding navigational capabilities where you can and cannot fly? Yes, 100%. But does it have anything to do with your ability and practical use of flying a drone? Because every man pilot, no offense, that I've seen, other than Scott, I know you're listening to this, other than Scott, is a horrible, horrible That's drone harsh. pilot. <laughs> He's only seen two man pilots fly drones. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but no so, okay. No, no, no. Let me finish what I was saying here. Yes. Look, is there please. validity in your statement for a vast majority of people who do not know anything about drones and airplanes? 
I'm sure that if you were to say, yes, I have a manned pilot's license as well, I'm sure that you would gain credibility with people who have a lack of knowledge of the deviation and differences between SUAS and planes. Now, for those people that you do work with who are tech savvy, a little bit younger and understand the basics of aviation, that's like literally going to be saying, I make great spaghetti with cake. Just saying. Like, it, your ability to fly a plane has nothing to do with your ability to fly a drone. Again, there are knowledge-based important pieces of information that are definitely going to help your ability in flying a drone, but there is no causality that is provable to this point that flying a manned aircraft is going to help you fly a drone. There is more causality, and there's now research that says if you were actually a gamer growing up in high school between the ages of like 12 and 17 and happened to play first-person shooters, you are going to be a really damn good drone pilot. Well, now, there's fact, research out there that proves that. In, <laughs> there's in, no research out there that says you fly a Cessna, you must be a really damn good drone pilot yeah and, and i don't think that that's what he's asking but as far as what you're talking about literally i think there it's been and i haven't read all the studies and so forth but i've read and heard that literally the kid that you're talking about is probably likely to be a better drone pilot than a jet pilot right from yes. the military or whatever. I would say that's definitely true, too, because of sensitivity and ideological mindsets. Let's, well, not, let's not take that away. I'm sure there's some older guys here that are like, let's not take away the emotional uh, lack of intelligence by our younger generation. Oh, I'm not sure. Gonna, I'm not going to fight that at all. Of course they, not. When, they would that's probably make the, horrible manned pilots. That's not, well, I don't. <laughs> the vast majority of them. Which is true with the population in general. But I think... My response to this question is you're going to have a couple of camps if you choose to go the route of including your private pilot's license in your marketing. I think one camp is it can help in the sense that it just shows. I mean, the reality is even though you're trying to bring in cake and spaghetti and Chinese food and whatever <laughs> you're doing over there. Maybe I'm hungry. <laughs> the reality is there's some relationship between the two. And I think that it shows you have the propensity for making – for doing something challenging and difficult and being successful at it. I think as to Paul's point, particularly with maybe the younger set and the technically savvy people, there could be some cynicism towards that based on what we've heard and seen. And so all that to say is I'm 50-50. I probably would in some subtle way include it in it, – it, it's like – I mean, sometimes I think it can go overboard with people who have a lot of letters after their names. Oh, geez. I mean, depending, I don't know what that threshold is, but I've definitely seen names with so many letters after it that I just laugh, and I don't even know what to do with that person. Like, which letter am I supposed to focus on, <laughs> and yeah. which grouping of letters are they best at? I don't think that's the case here if you're just talking about your Part 107 and having a PPL. I mean, I think there's some synergy there that you have the ability to accomplish the job that they're asking you to accomplish. And so I would see it maybe a little bit differently than what Paul's describing here. But understand there could be some cynicism associated with seeing that just because of a cultural issue relative to the drone industry and, and some of the young people that are involved in the industry. Although I think the avatar for the drone industry is much older. And I don't by older, I don't mean retired older, but I just sort of an older set of people than, than a lot of folks might understand. So anyways, that's my two cents. And I guess if I had to say yes or no to you, I'd say 51% yes. So I think answering this question from like a marketer's standpoint, I think that it is fair to say that it depends on the audience. Yeah. If you are fair. working with an older audience, again, in like a technical field, you, you'll probably get credit for it, and it'll be good. For a younger, more tech-savvy audience, it's not going to gain you points. I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say it would be negative or derogatory. Um, someone like me who passionately analyzes the way that people market themselves and the credibility and authority that it brings or doesn't bring, I don't see the advantage in doing it but look at the audience. Look at me. I'm younger, very tech savvy, not humble enough. And <laughs> I appreciate you saying that. I hope you do too. <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> I would look at, I would look at someone like they're effing crazy no, if they no, told no, me no. that. You would not. So if you I just... would bring up the cake thing, I'd be like, "So you make a good taco, huh? That's well, what you're saying? Good. You're a certified taco maker? Okay. All right. Don't I don't want to hear about your cheesecake, okay? Maybe some flan, no cheesecake, okay? <laughs> so, so basically don't use Paul as your audience <laughs> because I would also suggest, what does it hurt? And, and I say that understanding what I just said about some cynicism, but I think that's probably going to be the minority. Yeah, I would agree with that statement. So, so, yeah. Cool. Awesome. All right, guys, well, that is going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Dronio. Ask <laughs> Dronio.